I had a dream about Paul. <clears throat> I hadn't seen Paul in 15 years, so I was surprised to find him lingering in my subconscious, dancing through my dreams and making me feel things in the middle of the night. Weeks later, he popped up on my Facebook, my Facebook friend suggestions. I thought, okay, universe, I'll play. We connected, and soon we had plans to meet for dinner. I was eager to ask him questions about the death of my brother, questions that I didn't have the courage to ask at the tender age of 13. My brother died in a car crash in 2003. Paul was the only other person in the car with my brother that night. He was also the only one who survived. Paul was 17, and my brother, Chance, was an immature and rowdy 18 years old. Smoking weed, barbecuing steaks, and being boys in a lonely small town on a Saturday night. They took the truck out for a joyride. The truck lost control when rubber tires met a dirt road at 80 miles per hour. The truck flipped over, pinning my brother's legs under the cab. While Paul recalled the incident at dinner, he told me that Chance was conscious when Paul crawled out of the upside of the truck. Chance begged him to get the truck off of his legs. Paul tried, but of course couldn't lift the truck by himself. He ran for help as Chance screamed. He could hear Chance scream until he ran over a mile to the nearest neighbor's house. Chance screamed until he bled to death. He was gone by the time anyone came to help him. Questions answered. I sat in horror as tears streamed down my face. Chance died 17 years ago, and I still can't keep my shit together when I talk about him. I'll miss my brother until the day I die. Paul had been out of prison for three weeks. My brother's death inspired a meth addiction for him, and Paul stole cars and whatever else to support his habit. He lost six years to a state penitentiary for burglary and assault. The flame from the candle on the, table on the table flickered on our faces, and Paul couldn't stop staring at me. I was dating Paul when Chance died. He was four years older than me, a completely inappropriate situation for a young 13-year-old, but my mother allowed it. My father died three years before Chance did, and my mother had taken to alcohol to cope with her pain. Alcohol, mixed with a drug-addicted and alcoholic lover, made for plenty of distraction. She was busy, to say the least. My body was soft and doughy as a young 13-year-old. I was a late bloomer, and I didn't acquire the attention of men until I was nearly 20 years old. But I had Paul's attention now. As the conversation shifted towards us, Paul's body language changed. He asked me what I thought about him and what, members, what memories I had of him from all those years ago. I remembered him being silly and doing what he could to make me laugh. Once, he paraded around Walmart with a huge box of tampons on one shoulder, banging his head around as if he was keeping rhythm to a faux boom box made of cotton and string. The thought made me laugh out loud. Time has a very funny way of romanticizing the most painful of situations. I told him the thing that I respected most about him was how gentle he was with me back then, never forcing me to do anything I didn't want to do and never taking advantage of me. We, we kissed and light foreplay happened, but never any kind of penetration. I don't ever remember feeling uncomfortable. When I said this to Paul, he readjusted his body in a, made, in a way that made one thing clear. I was missing something. His hands were shaking. He was starting to sweat. I didn't quite understand what was happening, and I dug deeper. You don't remember, do you? I don't remember what, I said. We didn't have sex. Wait, did we have sex? Paul looked at me like he had something to say and that he really, really, really didn't want to say it. After Chance died, you went to high school the next year. You lost your virginity to Kenny. He dumped you right afterwards, and everyone knew about it. You got, shut, you got slut-shamed really badly. It was awful. Yes, I said. I remember. It was my life. And I was getting somewhat defensive, but more so deeply inquisitive. You really don't remember this, do you? said Paul. And I said, remember what? I never wanted to... Paul said, I never wanted to be the one who took your virginity. So when you gave it up to Kenny, I figured I'd try to get in your pants. I came over to your house and I forced you to have sex with me. I guilted you into doing it and I forced you. It was physically painful for you. I never forgave myself for doing that to you. Elena, I wasn't kind to you. I took advantage of you in every way I knew how. I spent a lot of my life wondering if I ruined yours. I felt physically ill. Vomit crept up my throat. 
A near complete stranger just reminded me that he had raped me. I had been in so much pain and had endured so much trauma that my mind had completely blocked it out of my memory. The feelings came rushing back. When I thought about this event, I suddenly became familiar with this dark hole in my stomach. I remember cutting my wrists and screaming in my room and wishing that I would die. Feeling and breathing and existing was impossible back then. And in an instant, I remembered it all and I could hardly breathe. He asked me if I was okay. He looked me in the eyes and told me he was sorry over and over and over again. He said he couldn't believe that I showed up for dinner because he didn't think I'd ever forgive him. And I didn't forgive him. I just forgot. I left dinner after choking down my vomit and claiming that I was okay. I left telling him that I forgave him and that my life had been extremely hard, but that I had made the best of it and I was thriving now. I left after I put on a parade of fake smiles and downed beers back to back to back after not drinking for weeks prior. I was pumped so I was so pumped full of adrenaline that I didn't even feel buzzed. I felt I left feeling damaged and broken and used and thrown thrown away. I left as a victim of rape. I sat in my car for a few minutes in the parking lot. I sat there waiting for a feeling to emerge, a feeling that I could hold on to and use as an umbrella from the moment. And I couldn't feel anything. All I could measure was the hole that was in the middle of my chest. It was growing. I couldn't stop it. I was paralyzed and I suddenly didn't care. Defenseless, helpless, brokenhearted, and abandoned 14-year-old little Elena had been raped by someone she trusted, and no one ever knew about it. No one came to comfort her. No one held her through the tears. She was alone, and a piece of her died. She was alone, and a piece of her died. The innocent piece that only existed in the same plane as the one where her brother was alive, and would protect her no matter what, just like he always said he would. I hurt for her. I realize that this is a com- that this is common for people who have been manipulated and raped. Their minds block out the memory completely because their nervous system can't handle the shock. I spent a lot of time thinking I lived in the space that distanced that distanced survivors of rape and those of us women who are lucky enough to dodge that title. I was wrong. I lived on the wrong side of the margin. Embarrassment washed over me. At the time I was 29 when I wrote this. At 29 and in the blink of an eye. I feel like I'm on a new journey now, a new journey of healing and forgiveness and swallowing the realization that things aren't always what they seem to be. I also realize that I am incredibly incredibly lucky to get an apology from my rapist. I know that many women receive hate, shame, blame, dismissal, and denial instead. Some don't even get that, and they don't get the privilege of blocking it out of their memories either. They relive it every single day. As I wrap up the last few months of my Saturn return, I realized that I had the dream about Paul so that I could learn the truth. Although I'm still trying to figure out what I should do with the truth, I'm still glad to know it. I'm left wondering how I can protect and love every single little girl and to make sure that she knows how special and important she is. And all I can do is let the little girl inside of me know instead. To little Elena, I want you to know this. I love your imperfections, your sensitivity, and the unique unique way that you see the world. I cherish the authentic curiosity you have for people and the way that they love each other. You are smart enough. You are love. You are worthy. You deserve so much than you were ever given. The world is generally a good place and you are welcome here. You are safe. You are loved beyond measure and you are supported. You are perfect just the way you are in every single way. Grow, little one. Grow. Reach higher. Dream bigger. Have courage to face the dark. I will always be here for you. You don't need forgiveness because you didn't do anything wrong. I will always protect you.